Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Today, I'm standing on property that I believe is a portal and an opening into the presence of God. And I'm going to have to explain that to you today on the Manifest Telecast. I am on what's called the OCI property right here in Cleveland, Tennessee, the headquarters of Voice of Evangelism and OCI Ministry. Now, this property was developed to help build the OCI gathering place. Many of you already know about that. And we're having our fall festival. Now, this will be aired toward the end of the year, meaning fall festival will long be over. But I wanted to show you what it was like during our great fall festival, during the main event meeting. But directly behind me are three crosses on a hill right here on the property. But I want to tell you a story that's very intriguing to me, quite personal about this hill. We have a family that we have known for many, many years, and that family is the James family, Robbie, Tammy, Tiffany, and Chris. And uh, Robbie and his wife were baptized in the Holy Spirit in our ministry many years ago in Alabama. His, Robbie's father was converted to the Lord during a special Sunday service over 26 years ago. But I want to tell you what happened. About a year and three months ago, when this property was in the very early stages of being developed, Tammy had a dream that was so real of her grandfather, who has gone to be with the Lord, standing right here on this spot. And he looked at her as in the dream, she was at the base of the hill looking up at him, and he said, Tammy, this is your inheritance. Now she told me the dream a, a year, and it will be now probably a year and four months ago, when it happened, but it never made sense to either one of us or to our families because what did her grandfather mean in the dream? Again, he'd gone to be with the Lord that says this is your inheritance. Well, we start speculating, having a lot of fun. Maybe there's something buried under the property. Maybe we'll find something. But here's the story. Her uh, great-grandfather was a Cherokee Indian and one of the first of his tribe to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ or Christianity. Now, the missionary that won them to the Lord was a missionary by the name of Washburn. So they took on the family name Washburn based on the missionary who won them to the Lord. Again, Cherokee Indians, her great-grandfather, a chief of a Cherokee tribe. Now, one day when this property was being prepared, only Robbie and myself and Tammy and just very close friends knew about this dream. We didn't publicly talk about it. But my dear friend Steve Williams, who was developing the property, all of a sudden I show up here one day and he, by himself, by his own decision, put three crosses on top of the hill. I immediately went back and got Tammy. I said, you've got to see this. I think I know what your inheritance is. We came back and showed her the crosses and she began to cry. She says, oh my, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. She says, my inheritance is Christianity. He was telling me that my inheritance is my faith that has come through the generations. Faith in Christ, a born again experience knowing Jesus. But the thing that stunned her is this. The only picture that exists of her grandfather, the Cherokee Indian, her grandfather, is a picture of him standing in front of three crosses that was taken many, many, many years ago. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is we come up here, we've made this a place of prayer on our OCI property. And we've got three crosses. The tree stumps serve as places you can sit. They serve as altars. But let me tell you something about this place that I, is extremely interesting. I've come up here. Some of our ministry team have come up here. Our youth come up here. And when you pray, there's lights on this at night. But when you pray, it's like there is a portal in the heavens where there's an opening and your prayers go through so easy. Not only that, but directly behind us is our prayer barn. Now, right now we're having our fall festival, but right there in the top of that prayer barn, it's fully carpeted. And every Thursday night, every Thursday night, we have prayer meeting beginning at 8 o'clock to about 9.30 with sometimes 50 to 140 people who gather in that barn and it comes across the internet. We go on the internet live. We have hundreds of firehouses. These are homes of individuals that are joining us in prayer. And it's odd because when we first took this barn, I mean, it was awful looking and we turned it into the prayer barn, it's though that there was this open window and open heaven. Well, I began to question, I, I began to say to myself, okay, who owned this property and what was the story behind it? 
We later found out through Judy Jacobs' ministry that there was a precious woman that was connected to all this property many, many years ago who as a young woman served as a missionary to Canada for young people. Now listen to me, this gets more bizarre. And we found out that this was a piece of property where people would consistently pray on and seek the Lord. It was owned by believers. Now the reason I'm telling you this very quickly is to share something with you that I think is significant. I believe it's possible that through intensive prayer in one location, find a hot spot, find a place and I think in the last days we need this more than any other time. You need to find a spot. It may be the backyard. It may be a place that you walk. It may be a place behind your yard. It may be a place you go to, a piece of property you own or your family owns, a big tree. Find a spot that becomes your meeting place between you and God. Because those meeting places between you and God can form a portal where God knows He's going to meet you there. When Abraham went to Bethel, when they needed a touch of God, the patriarchs went back to Bethel. You'll discover that when the children of Israel put the stones in the Jordan River, that's the place 1,500 years later, John the, baptized, the baptizer was baptizing people on the very spot of the Jordan River where the stones were. So I want to say this to you. You've got to find a portal. You've got to find an opening. You've got to find a place that when you pray, you are comfortable. You feel good about that spot. You feel good about that place. It's just a feeling that you get that there's an atmosphere of a breakthrough. Because I've said this to you probably two times on Manifest. Before my father died, he said to me, he said, the, the body of Christ, individual believers are going to come under some of the worst testing they've ever come under in their life in the last days. And they're going to have to learn to pray and pray excessively in the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the things I want to tell you about is this, that several, several years ago when the Lord began to deal with me about reaching a generation and fathering a generation, He dealt with me of the necessity of having a piece of property that we could build on. Now, in the distance right over here, you can see it from right where we're standing, is the fully paid for brand new OCI gathering place. This is where we're having our main event. Thousands of people are coming into that 3,000 seat auditorium and they're enjoying the presence of God. Directly beside it, there's a children's church going on. We built this to be a headquarters where people could come together and be lifted up and be encouraged and have a great move of the Spirit. But let me tell you, and if you hear the gospel music, that's the Glass family singing from the open air tabernacle right here on the ranch. But I want to show you something. Walk with me, uh, uh, my friend on the camera. I want to show you, look at what's happened here. This property that you're looking at right here is being prepared for one of the greatest youth camps in the nation and also for our international leadership school where we're going to be training about 200 young people for ministry and leadership. Why am I taking the time to share this with you? Can you see, friends and partners, can you see what great things God has done in less than two years? God is moving in a wonderful way. You know why? Because I believe number one, it's the last days. Number two, I believe that there's a prophecy hanging on this generation. And that prophecy is that God is gonna pour out His Spirit upon all flesh in the last days. I don't know about you, I'm in my 50s and I am not gonna be left out of what God is about to do. I'm not going to allow myself to come to a time where I just kind of sit back and lay back and get comfortable in spiritual things. Joshua was 80, Caleb was 85, and they went into the presence of God with a young generation to take the promised land. Everybody under their ministry was 40 years of age, and they conquered 31 Canaanite cities because they said, we're not going to sit here on this side of Jordan. I want to talk to some of you. You are not too old for God to use. You are not too old to become an intercessor. You are not too old to find that place at your home, your apartment or maybe in your church where there's a hot spot where you can intercede and become a powerful intercessor, changing the atmosphere of churches and nations and even the United States through the power of your prayer. You are never too old to have wisdom to impart to a younger generation. And I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I wanna encourage you, don't give up on yourself. Don't let the enemy tell you you are too old, that your day is gone, that this generation doesn't wanna hear what you have to say. We have a woman connected to our ministry almost 85 years of age. And this precious sister, our young people sit and listen to her. They love her, they treat her like a grandmother. She treats them like their grandkids. And I'm telling you, when they do wrong, she's right in their face and they respect her for that. I'm saying to you, God wants to give you a voice in these last days. He wants to give you a voice and He wants you to be able to have a portal where He can speak and minister to you. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I want you to see what's going on. Our television producer, is going to walk around and show you the, 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 
the food, I, Pam's down there somewhere cooking. And I don't know if Pam wants to be on camera or not. Charlie may have to sneak up on her on this one and not even let her know he's taping her. But I want you to walk around, go through the barn. They'll probably talk to a few people because I want you to see what God is doing. And I want to say this to all of you watching, those of you that's kept up with Manifest in the United States, outside the United States. I want you to stand with me and help me get this next phase built of the International Leadership Academy and the youth camp. I don't have forever. You don't have forever. We're all on limited time. I believe it's the last days. And I believe it's time for us to move on and press forward and get to the nations of the world through young people and adults as well who want to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, we are having a time out here. Let's walk this way for just a moment. Let me show you something. Let me show you where we're at here. Right down here is Pam's kitchen. Now, Pam is in there cooking all kinds of food. Man, she's having a time, and she's running back and forth. Now, she's usually right down here at the bottom. I mean, they've got food. They've got all kinds of, they've got kettle corn. They've got uh, uh, funnel cake. I can't eat any of that, okay, because I can't have a lot of sugar. Isn't that terrible? Thank God when I get to heaven, I'm going to eat all the sugar I want. Hallelujah. So anyway, we've got that. Then over to the side of that is the prayer barn. There's a craft show taking place there now. Way on the other end, there's tents up there. There's food. There's games. We've even got what's called a hillbilly, uh, what do they call this, obstacle course and competition, uh, all kinds of stuff. You'd have to understand carnivals and fairs from years ago that we grew up in Virginia and West Virginia to appreciate that. Then over here, look over here. Here's the pavilion. And in the pavilion, we've got picnic tables. We've got a, a gospel concert, southern gospel concert getting ready to happen. That's, that's the music you're hearing in the background. And look again, let's span this. I want to show them on camera. We're going to start down here. Now, my father is buried right up here, Voice of Evangelism. If you'll look right up in this direction, the red building, the red roof, way in the distance is Voice of Evangelism. If you come across the hill, my daddy's buried right up there in the cemetery. It's really odd, kind of overlooking. Now, we know he's in heaven. He's not there, but overlooking the property. And then this is all the property here. And right now, we've got all this developed. We've got this here. Let's turn this way, guys. We're going to turn this way. This is the new, the new property where we're getting ready to build on as God provides. Then the OCI facility is here. Now, just to, by the way, my friend Judy Jacobs is right up on the hill. I told her, I said, it's like Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, and Mount Ophel. The whole mountain belongs to God. Everything from the base of the hill at BOE all the way to the top belongs to God. And again, we're coming to you from the headquarters in Cleveland, Tennessee, talking about portals, all right? They're going to walk around and show you some things, perhaps talk to a few folks, but I want to thank you for joining me on Manifest. There's a special book offer I'm making available to you, but also we need to hear from you to help us move into this next phase of ministry. It's going to be great. And some of your kids and grandkids children are going to be right here one day being blessed in a portal that God has provided of prayer and intercession. See this right here? You know what this is? This is kettle corn. You make this, you put sugar in it, right? You got to put sugar. Is it syrup or something or just sugar? Sugar. They, see, they don't even know what's in it. <laughs> They're making it, but they don't know what's in it. But look here. See, I ain't supposed to eat this. I mean, uh, for health purposes, for me. But see, I'm going to tell you something. See that right there? I love popcorn. When I get to heaven at the marriage supper, there will be a bowl of this this big just for me. You understand? Because it's not going to affect me. Look at you. I'm eating somebody's kettle corn. They're supposed to sell this stuff. Look over here. Look, look, look. Look, you want to know how we, people go to our service? <laughs> they go to our services and they stay awake. Oh, you know, we, we have a morning service, we have the fall festival, we have the night service. Right here, snow cones, sugar. We, now, nine of you health folks are just rolling over right now when I say this. But we just give them snow, uh, what, what do you call it? Snow biz, snow, shaved ice. ice. And then you put this on it, let me tell you something. If they are spiritually dead, their eyes are open and they're hooping and hollering in church, aren't they? It's yeah, true, isn't absolutely. it? It works, don't it? So, again, you, for you health, very health conscious people, don't write me and rebuke me. This is just, this is what you do at a fall festival. Okay, I can't help it. I can't help it. Now, here's the weakness. I'm telling you, when, when we grew up in church in Big Stone Gap, Virginia, my mother, she made homemade pies with the church ladies and we sold them in the town. I'm telling you, this is the truth. I'm honest. This is my weakness right here. This is a temptation, all right? Look here, come here. This is, this is apples, all right? Can you see this? And, and I, I, I need gloves on to do this, but I'll hold up the paper. Look at this, all right? That's the pies. Now right here, this, this one looks like it was a burnt offering offered to God. That, that's really not what they're supposed to look like. 
But when I eat them, I, I like mine burnt. Do you like yours not burnt? What do you call it? Extra, extra crispy? That's the word I'm looking for. But look at that right there. Man, I'm going to tell you what, we could offer that up on the altar, on the tree stump up there. And that right there is, <laughs> I'll tell you what that looks like. That looks like a piece of Long John Silver's chicken. You know, they dip it. Does it not look like that? And what is this? This is the funnel cake. I think this is the reject pile. They've got this in the back. Okay, is that the reject pile? But look at this, man. Look at these things. They put them in here and they heat them up. Look, I'm coming in a minute, okay? I'm coming in a minute. I want extra, extra crispy on the edges. You know, you know, you know how I like them. You know how I like them. But I wanted to show you this. Let me go over here. Let's go down to the barn now. Let's go down here to the barn and see what's going on. I want to show you something down here that's taking place. Here I am at the Fall Festival. I run into Jack Harris. Jack Harris is a, a great man of God. Been a, how many years you've been in missions work? 32. 32 years in missions work. He's one of the men that we support uh, around the world. We don't talk about everything he does, but Jack is a great man of God. Jack, you also... Look like you got some patches, brother. Come on, what you got? There he is, look at there, there he is. Now, I'm, let me just say something to you, Jack. We've been friends for years. When I go to St. Louis to preach, I usually hang out with Jack yeah. and so on. But Jack, by looking at you, I'm glad you're on my side. Do you understand? <laughs> That's right. I'm glad you're on my side. If you ever go in a dark alley, let me know, I'll go with you. <laughs> you hear what he said? If I ever have to go in a dark alley, he's gonna go with me. Yeah. Now, right over here, Tina's over here. Tina's part of OCI ministry. You wanna stand up? I didn't mean to interrupt you. I've just interrupted. And you came back. She came back to the Lord. It was almost a year ago now, a little bit yeah, longer than that. Yeah, almost a year. And, and uh, has a business here in town in the city. But we've watched her grow in the Lord, her daughter growing in the Lord. And this is why we do what we do, because we love to watch lives changed and people touched. And so, um, you know, walking out here is so much fun because we get to see so many people, but home folks as well as people like Jack. And Jack, let me, let me say something to you. Uh, VOE has stood with you for a long time, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they have. And uh, just take 15 Pro seconds. I want you to thank all of our partners watching for helping. Partners, thank you so much for helping us. When I go places in the world, dark places, Indonesia with Muslims, Brazil in the slums, I always know the VOE partners are praying for us and supporting us and helping us. The Bible says the fields are wide into harvest, and we couldn't go reap that harvest if it wasn't for the partners that send us. Thank you so very thank much. So thank you. I wanted, to, I wanted to give out a word to those on the Manifest Telecast who do partner with us, because there's a lot of things we do we don't tell right. people. Yeah. We just kind of do it and let God take care of that and let the yeah. results come with Him. All right, come walk with me. Can we keep those cameras running? Let's walk right here. This is stuff I just love to do, kind of off the cuff. Now, the prayer barn, the prayer barn is over here on the right. It's beautiful. Hey, it didn't, if you ever saw the old pictures, it sure didn't look like this when we first built it. But I want to kind of give you a feel of what's going on here. And like I said a moment ago, there's a craft show going on now. But every Thursday, don't forget this, we come on the Internet live at, uh, at uh, uh, you can go to the parastone.org and get it. Click on and you can watch the prayer meeting and join the prayer meeting live. Now you see the other side of things here. And right up here is where the pavilion is. The pavilion is packed. There's 100 people sitting in the pavilion with our picnic tables outside. And, uh, you know, one of the things I want to do, let me just share this with you. One of the things that I think churches should do is spend a lot of time allowing their people to fellowship outside of that particular church building, whether it's youth or, you know, I know next year in 2014, we've got these major youth conferences coming up, a lot of major things going on. And I love the Open Air Tabernacle because that's what I grew up in. This was camp meeting when I grew up. Open Air Tabernacle. I mean, you can hear this thing in these houses, over in the businesses here. But in Cleveland, Tennessee, there's a lot of churches, 380 churches in this county. And so uh, they love this kind of stuff. I love this kind of stuff. So let me, tell you, let me show you one more thing. You can see all the folks sitting at the, the uh, covered bridge. I almost didn't. I almost didn't get the word out on that one. But you can see all them sitting at the covered bridge. Then over here you can see all of the folks that are joining together. And last year when we had our fall festival, we called it Pam's Fall Festival, kind of an annual event. Last year when we had it, the weather just hit us real hard. We had it later in October. This year the weather is perfect. Thank you, Lord, for that. But I want again to show you what God is doing here and give God all the glory and the praise. And thanks so many of you that are part of the ministry that come to Cleveland during our prophecy conferences, during our youth conventions, during the main event which is going on now, and let you know how much we love and appreciate you. So the guys are going to kind of walk around a little bit, and of course at the end of the program we always want to let you know what's coming up. And there's one of my board members right there looking like he's, he's lost, he doesn't know what's going on. Can you see him? Can you see him? Here he comes, here he comes. 
Here comes Frank. Come here, Frank. Now, Frank, this is manifest. You didn't put your makeup on. Uh, but I look good anyway. Well, you look good anyway. Frank has been a board member how many years? 22, 23 years. 22 to 23 years, Frank has been a board member. I want to say how much I appreciate him being here. And let me tell you, the Bible says the greatest of the service. Do you know what this man is doing as a board member of VOE? <laughs> no, seriously, instead of sitting up there listening, eating, enjoying, he's collecting all the trash and making sure all the trash is taken care of. Now, folks, when you want to be in ministry, you got to learn how to clean toilets Amen. first. That's what I did, Frank, That's for right. years. In my dad, I cleaned my dad's church, cleaned the toilets, took care of the church for six or seven years before I ever got called to preach. Right. So remember, if you want to be in ministry, you have to have the ministry of cleaning the commodes first. <laughs> That's a good word, Amen. Amen. All right, Frank, get back to work. So uh, look up here at the deck. Look at the deck. That's where the craft show is. There's some folks from Kentucky. There's some ministry partners from Kentucky right there. In fact, the, the lady in the middle, her husband is a, a great police officer from Kentucky. He does all of our security here, uh, helps with that. So, I mean, I think you can get, I wish y'all could be here and get the feel of this. Now, probably when this is aired, it may be snow on the ground. It may be 40 degrees outside. But I did want to show you what's going on right here to give all of you an update, not only in North America, but around the world, because you've been asking me what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. And this, and this is a great update here. So they may go up here and tape some gospel music. I'm going to turn the camera guys loose, but stay tuned, because at the end, I'll come back and share a couple things with you on Manifest. Tens of thousands of people are no longer attending church, often because of a Judas goat. Years ago, certain farmers trained a crafty goat to graze among the sheep, gaining their trust in the field. When the day came for the sheep slaughter, the Judas goat led the sheep up the ramp, but this betraying goat escaped through a special door while the sheep went up a separate ramp, meeting their deaths. For you, the Judas goat can be a broken marriage covenant or church members and friends that have destroyed your trust. A Judas goat will befriend you today and betray you in the future. In his latest book, The Judas Goat, Perry Stone is now revealing his most comprehensive study on dealing with rejection, recovering from betrayal, and healing emotional wounds through forgiveness. The subjects include, are you sleeping with goats in your bed? Beware of those in your third chair. The betraying strategies of a Judas goat in the church, having right eyes with the wrong brain. When Satan fell from heaven, he landed in my choir. What happens when believers sin against believers? Believers that are vexed by the devil. When you drop your cross. I heard what you said in your tent. Private conversations made public. The power of life and death are in the tongue. Restoring fallen ministers and members. How relief comes only by confession. When you are wounded in the house of your friends. Lessons in the life of a Middle Eastern sheep. The Judas Goat Book is part of package offer JG108. When you order Perry's new book, The Judas Goat, he will include this new life-changing DVD, Don't Awaken Love Before the Time. Perry will explain the four levels of love, attraction, discerning voices in your relationships, and the danger of giving your heart away to the wrong person. He explains the chemicals released during romantic relationships and why broken relationships can have the same effect as a person coming off certain drugs. He will also explain why some people battle depression and suicidal thoughts when breaking off a relationship. The Judas Goat Book and the DVD Don't Awaken Love Before the Time are now available for your gift of just $25 or more. Shipping and handling are included. To order, call 1-888-21-BREAD. That's 1-888-212-7323. Or order online at perrystone.org. You can also write to us at Perry Stone, Post Office Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. When writing, request offer number JG108 and include your gift of $25 or more. Your support helps keep Manifest on the air. This is one of our most important resource offers ever. We are looking forward to hearing from you soon. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that teaching. Let me tell you about that. That was at our fall festival at what we call the ranch here in Cleveland, Tennessee, right below, right below the OCI building. And got a lot of great things planned in 2014 on that property. And I think you enjoyed that and kind of get to getting the feel of everything that was going on. I've got to tell you something, though. When my wife was in that kitchen cooking those fried pies, I grew up um, in a rural church in Big Stone Gap, Virginia. 
And back in that day, the women would cook peach pies and apple pies, blueberry pies, etc. And they, would, they were homemade, and they would deep fry them, and they would sell them in the community. And I mean, when, the, when they knew those church women were cooking those fried pies, people just absolutely loved it. They would call, can you bring some by the factory? Can you bring some by the business? And so when I walked into the kitchen, and then Pam is preparing these pies, which they did during the fall festival, I'm just telling you something. And I have to watch how I eat, and I'm not bragging on this. I had to do it. But I came off of most carbs, and I've lost about 40 pounds. And I know some of you have been saying, Perry, you don't look real healthy. You know, you're losing a lot of uh, uh, whatever, fat. <laughs> and others of you have said, man, we can really tell the difference. I do feel better, by the way. But I'm telling you, when she starts cooking these pies and some of this other stuff, there is a spirit of temptation that comes on me. So I have to resist. Anyway, um, this will be the last opportunity you have to get the Judas Goat and the DVD don't arouse love before the time on the manifest telecast. If you've been waiting and waiting and putting it off, do it today. Contact us and get that, that, that resource material that we're making available to you. Now, we've got some great things. I want to tell you, first of all, that in the month of January, this will be our first meeting of the year, January, which will be Friday, all day Saturday. And then we're going to go have, have, have Sunday morning and going to have a Sunday night camp meeting service. will be our Reformation weekend here at OCI. There's no fee to attend, but we need you to register online. You just go up to the computer and click on Reformation, and you'll know uh, that just that we'll know that you're coming. You can prepare for that. The other thing is Warrior Fest, which is a great thing that we're going to start having every year. It's going to be Friday, March the 28th, all day Saturday, and then all day Sunday at Omega Center International. This is geared. This is our big youth meeting, our biggest youth meeting of the year. No registration, no, no fee to attend, but we do need you to register. And uh, you can go online and get all the information on that. We are going to have... 15 dance and drama teams, a competition during that time, and we're giving away a car. The value of the car is about $10,000. dollars you got to be 18 years and older to, and you have to be at the conference in order to get it at the drawing. So we got a lot of fun things planned. But just so that you'll know real quick, I'm coming to Tampa, Florida, City Life Church, Friday through Sunday, January 24th through 26th. Get there on Friday night. i got a real special word in Tampa Friday night. Also, February the 7th and the 9th, Friday through Sunday, that's five services in three days at Metro Church in Birmingham, Alabama, Free Chapel Worship Center in Irvine, California, Friday through Sunday, February 21 through 23. All the California folks that have been wanting to come to California, get on down to Free Chapel during that weekend and spend the entire weekend with us at this great conference. And then, of course, we got our big conference Wednesday through Sunday, First Assembly of God, Griffin, Georgia, March 19th, all the way through the 23rd. And you can get more information on the conferences, the conventions, the things going on at perrystone.org at our website. And uh, also don't forget that the Tuesday night services are live streamed to Tuesday at seven o'clock on OCIministries.org and also PerryStoneMinistries.org. And also don't forget the prayer barn on Thursday. And if you can join us in these conferences down the road, please do so. Uh, we, we always wanna take a moment and just share with people watching around the world. Please, if you don't have an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ, don't judge, look, don't judge Jesus by churches. Don't judge him by some of his followers. Because look at Judas, he was a follower, but he messed up. And Simon Peter even betrayed him. Don't judge Jesus by his followers or by some church that you went to that you didn't like. Judge Jesus by his word, the Bible. Get to know him by the word and get to know him by prayer. Because I'm going to tell you something. If the world knew what Jesus was really like, everybody in the world would be following him. I believe that with all my heart. I've got some new teaching from the main event coming up next week.